in thinking about the size of life within the known universe, we would have to consider aspects such as available resources, evolutionary strategies, mutations, and the physical limitations of planets and celestial bodies. Simply put, is there an upper bound for the maximum possible living, being in a scientifically rational world without taking into account anti-gravity, magic, force, or other physical concepts of which we are unaware. When we talk about life, we subconsciously mean organisms, ranging in size from cells and animals to fungi and trees. The largest creatures on Earth are record, breaking animals that have reached the maximum parameters among their species in terms of masses, height, or length. For example, the most vicious gorillas after humans, of course a genus of the largest monkeys, representatives of the primate group. In adult, males' growth can reach up to two meters, shoulder width is one meter, and weight up to 250 kg and more. It is desirable to avoid direct contact and share everything that you hold in your hands and pockets. Elephant is the largest land mammal with a length of up to seven meters and a height of up to 3.5 meters the average body mass. Yet the blue whale is the largest animal on Earth in terms of mass and length that has ever lived. The size of the blue whale is quite impressive. These giants reach up to 33 meters in length and weigh almost 200 tons. The mythical giant kraken doesn't count. As you may have noticed, the largest animal on Earth lives in water. And that's no accident. The fact is that the water environment counteracts the force of gravity and reduces the weight of the object several times. Of even greater importance is the ultimate cohesive force of the particles that make up the body. It ends on the force of gravity. The more it is, the less this limit. In marine animals, the weight is reduced, so the limit of adhesion force will be much greater. Also, for large animals to live on land, they need something to lean on. Land giants have a strong bony skeleton, developed limbs and powerful muscles for this. They use a lot of energy to overcome gravity and move their bodies through space. But still, let's try to enlarge a large animal by 10 times. Then the stiffness of the skeleton will increase by a maximum of 100 times and the mass will increase by 1,000 times, and the mass will increase by 1,000 times. The skeleton will not be able to support the weight of the body, causing the organism to become unviable and break like a cookie. Disproportionate increase will also work for a short time. If we pull a living organism in one dimension, and that means that as the planet gets bigger and its gravity increases, so does the force acting on animal bones. Christian Huygens wrote about this back in the 17th century. But since gravity causes so many problems, why not change it by moving to a smaller planet? This approach will work, but only up to a point. Planets can't shrink indefinitely. The smallest planets will have a mass 10 times smaller than Earth's. Therefore, the largest creatures will be at most 10 times larger than Earth's. That is, on such a planet, we will meet an angry gorilla about five stories high. However, there are minimum sizes for such planets as well. If it is smaller, less than one-tenth, the mass of Earth, it will not be able to hold an atmosphere, one of the necessary conditions for life. So our King Kong wouldn't survive even if it found giant bananas. Not if we're talking about organisms from planet Earth, which we know are pretty fragile. So we will slightly depart from the classical Earth view and fantasize. So, if the planets are more or less clear, let's think about space where gravity is almost non-existent. Imagine a life form in the shape of a giant net, a jellyfish or a space fungus one that collects space dust into itself to grow, using starlight both for its growth and to propel its biological light sail. 
to compensate for gravity, the creature will probably begin to rotate as it grows and will continue to add angular momentum, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. A goal of the organism is to balance gravity with centrifugal force. These creatures could theoretically grow to gigantic proportions if they were limited only by raw materials and solar energy. Perhaps they could penetrate star systems and raid rings around planets, asteroids, and even small moons like Vikings in search of resources and then leave the devastated area, continuing to grow. Perhaps they could reproduce by releasing spores or more likely when their size became too large, simply splitting into two, three or more parts like cells. Would humanity become just dessert? Most likely, yes. No more. But what if we go even further? Without tying the organism to life on the planet, or even its orbit, after all, we can assume that the hypothetical living organism can be the size, for example, with a whole star system, or even with a galaxy. However, in this case, there are even more problems, and the most important ones are energy and speed. Every creature must have metabolism in some form. The exchange of useful substances between different parts of the body is necessary for the transfer of energy. And in order to exchange that energy, you have to get it from somewhere. If our being is the size of a star system, then the only obvious source of energy is a star. So we have a kind of Dyson's living sphere. Metabolism would be extremely slow. Otherwise, the substances would have enough kinetic energy to leave the system. It is unclear how such an organism could have evolved in principle, because natural physical processes tend to form planets from the dusty protoplanetary disk around the star. If such an organism exists, it must resist this process. But it's not clear how. If we are talking about intelligent life, then the organism must form informational links in humans, these are brain neurons, which are interconnected by means of electrical impulses. But if the brain model is enlarged to the scale of the solar system, not to mention the galaxy, then communication between neurons will still be limited by the speed of light, the speed of thought, the passage of an impulse from one end of the brain to the other will slow down several trillion times. In that case, to think as many thoughts as a human being thinks in a lifetime, the proposed being would need a trillion times more time. It would have to think for about a hundred trillion years, a true philosopher of universal proportions, except that the age of our universe is only 13.8 billion years, which is 7,500 times less. The next problem we have to face is cooling. Yes, yes, a living organism needs to be cooled. Computer chip designers are constantly having trouble removing the heat generated by computing. Living things have the same problem because skin is responsible for cooling an animal and heat is generated by volume. Large animals are less efficiently cooled Back in the 1930s, Swiss biologist Max Kleiber observed that for the vast majority of animals, the rate of basic metabolism is proportional to their body mass. Indeed, if the rate of heating were not reduced, large animals would simply boil. Yes, this is convenient if you don't have time to cook. However, if we assume that for a mammal to function properly, the minimum metabolic rate must be one trillionth of a watt per nanogram. We arrive at a maximum size of organisms on the order of a million kilograms, which is less than 10 times the mass of a blue whale. It is possible, in principle, to imagine animals larger in size. Relying on Landauer's principle describing the minimum amount of energy required for computation, and assuming that the energy resources of a supermassive, sluggish, multicellular organism are spent only on the slow reproduction of its cells, we find that its mechanical support problems overtake. 
those of heat dissipation and serve as the main limiting factor for growth. But on such scales, it becomes unclear what such a creature would do or how would it come to be. There is a view that the universe is the largest living organism with the characteristics of a creature built from information and taking into account the processes of metabolism, adaptation, and natural selection. The interpretation of the living universe hypothesis is consistent with the cosmological view that it can transform into other universes. The universe is also growing. It is constantly expanding and new galaxies are forming and eventually it will die when it exhausts all of its energy. If this is the case, the question arises, what are we doing inside this organism? My thoughts on that are not very rosy. Of course, in broad circles, the idea that the universe is a living organism is more of a philosophical or even fantasy concept than a scientific one. However, our understanding of the universe continues to evolve. And as we make new discoveries in various fields such as quantum mechanics, astrobiology and cosmology, our view of the nature of the universe may change. In conclusion, the question of how large a living organism can be in an ever-expanding universe continues to be of interest and curiosity to the scientific community, while physical constraints such as gravity and structural stability may limit the size of organisms at the biological level. The vastness of the universe provides endless opportunities for life to thrive and evolve beyond our imagined boundaries. Who knows what incredible life forms may exist in the depths of space waiting to be discovered. The possibilities are truly limitless.